focus today is on Sir Edmund Hillary notes, although ones with James Cook and Her Majesty on them will also be welcome. It won't matter whether they are signed by either Dr. Brash or Dr. Bollard. <laughs> we'll also take coins. It will be thought that any banknote with Sir Apirana Nutter on it, it will be a case of either showing off or needing a huge amount of change. <laughs> it will have been noted that I stood outside before our meeting with the man who shares my initials, the pre-proto-district governor, Anthony Scott, greeting you. There was a purpose to this because an opportunity arose with Anthony's help to identify quickly all those foibles of apparel to which it is traditional to draw attention. As a result, you all know who you are, and without the need to refer to anyone specifically, anyone without a rotary badge, anyone with a badge, especially a Paul Harris, not north and south, anyone with different shoes, anyone with stripes with stripes, different socks, brown shoes with a navy blue suit, <laughs> white shoes, each, each of you is fine and at a level consistent with your level of embarrassment. Today, the 10th of December, is day 345 of the calendar year, which leaves only 21 days until the year's end and 15 sleeps until Christmas. Anyone who hasn't begun thinking about Christmas presents, Christmas cards, or the venue of the Christmas family holiday ought to be fined severely. It's also the anniversary of Human Rights Day and the feast day of Pope St. Gregory III. I'm sorry to record on looking that we are a Gregless club, no Gregories. We have 10 Peters and 13 Johns, but no Gregs. So we'll have to come back to names. 10th December is the birthday of James I of Scotland, and that's a good enough excuse to call on you, former President James Austin, to contribute. <laughs> Next, a competition. People will know that it was, of course, today, the 10th of December in 1817, that Mississippi was admitted to the Union as the 20th American state. <laughs> Who thinks that there is one P in Mississippi? <laughs> if so, you're fine. <laughs> Who thinks that Mississippi has one double S and one single S? If you do, it's all, you're also fine because there are two double S's and two double P's. In 1520, on the 10th of December, Martin Luther, it will be recalled, burned the papal edict. I considered seeking permission from the pre-proto-district governor to impose a fine in a secular club on a religious footing. But it has to be a shoo-in, doesn't it, for a Catholic Rotarian to fine all the Protestants for Luther's actions. <laughs> All the Protestants are thus fine. <laughs> Car owners will know that on the 10th of December 1845, Robert Thompson patented the first pneumatic tyre. Anyone who has made three recent visits to the gas station without checking tyre pressures is fine. <laughs> Speaking of cars, today the 10th of December was the day that the 10th million Model T Ford rolled off the assembly line in Detroit in 1915. It would of course be unfair to older members of the club to find anyone who's ever owned a Model T Ford, but it does seem fairer to find anyone who has ever owned a Ford of either US, Australian, Japanese or New Zealand assembly. All Ford owners are asked to make a contribution. Returning to names, I have mentioned Gregory, and I record that today is also the feast day of Saints Julia and Eulalia. Now, we don't have any of those names in our number, but each on my study is a Catholic saint, 
So it seems right and proper now to find all the Catholics. <laughs> Today is the birthday of Melvin Dewey, the inventor of the scheme that classifies books in the library. Anyone who has ever had to pay a fine for a late return of a book during the last 65 years is now fine. It is, of course, desirable to include a New Zealand theme, and I do so in finishing. On 10th December, uh, the 10th December is the day that Nobel Prize winners are announced. In 1908, it was Lord Ernest Rutherford's honour. In 1962, Watson and Crick won it for the discovery of DNA. And that Watson and Crick were joined by a New Zealander. Does anyone know his name? You're right. And you can be excused and not find those of you who didn't know Morris Henry Wilkinson, who was born in Pongaroa, North Wairarapa. Uh, but, and you can be excused because his parents had the presence of mind to return to the United Kingdom when Morris was six. You'll find only if you feel guilty about not knowing that. <laughs> lastly, 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 on 10th December 2004, in New Zealand, all licensed premises, restaurants, cafes, offices, factories, warehouses, uh, uh, even smoko rooms became smoke-free. Anyone who has given up smoking deserves to be fined for your participation, whenever it was, in a truly awful habit. <laughs> That's it, Mr. President. Season's greetings.